Hey, I'm back, and today I want to talk about a way to generate rhythmic patterns. Uh, these are called Euclidean rhythms, and they were devised about, I don't know, about uh, 10 years ago. The rhythms they generate are actually you know, thousands of years old, but the way to do it is relatively new. I was looking for something on how to generate those kind of like ethnic rhythms, and I found this, and I think it's really interesting, so I thought I would share it. So first, let me go over kind of like a technical explanation, or at least a short technical introduction. So it's based on this paper by this guy called Godfrey Toussaint. I'm not that familiar with him, but apparently he looked at something that had to do with timing systems and neutron accelerators. So it started out as a physics problem by this guy named Jorkland. I don't know if I, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce that correctly. And he was looking for a way of dividing things evenly. In this case, it was pulses in a certain amount of time. But this guy, uh, what's his name? Godfrey Toussaint found that you can use this same Euclidean algorithm, the algorithm from Euclid, to make musical patterns. And he found when he did this, it actually came up with lots of uh, world music patterns, you know, the type of patterns you'd find in music from like Ghana or Nigeria or uh, Persian music, etc. And it said that this can generate all types of world music rhythmic patterns except for Indian music. I don't know about that, so I haven't researched it, so maybe it can, maybe it can't, but it can definitely in, you know, make some interesting patterns. So let me show you some. Enough about the background of it. You probably don't care. If you do care, check that out yourself. I'll leave a link uh, below. Here, here's an example of some. So you see this like E38. I know it sounds confusing, but E, that's just like Euclidean pattern. Three, that's the number of hits, and eight is the number of beats in the pattern. So, like, let's say we're doing a bar of 4-4 and we do it in eighth notes. That means there's eight beats in the measure and three of those will be hits in this case. So, you see you have this type of rhythm. So, like, hit, no hit, like a rest, no hit, hit, rest, rest, hit, rest. Okay, so this is just a basic one. And... It seems complicated, but if you use it in the step sequencer, it becomes much easier. So let's open this. It's Geist 2. And so this is really cool for doing that type of thing. I really like this sequencer. There's lots of cool things you can do related to Euclidean patterns. But I have this here. What sound is this? A, a Dubak? I don't know. So let's do that. We have 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. So let's see here. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3... Uh, one, two. Okay. I'm just doing the low because I don't want to have the same sound going twice. I don't want machine gunning. But let's hear it. Oh, Sorry, I have a bunch of other things playing. Let me solo this. Here we go. So, there we go. We have that. That's basically what we want. But there's other things you can do, too. Instead of having these zeros be rest, we can have those be, like, hits on a different drum. Or in this case, we'll have them be finger hits. So the lows will be one, and the finger hits will be the zero. So let's just fill these in with A, B, A, B, and A. So let's hear it now. Here we go. Okay, so for me, like, that's, ah, that's where those kind of rhythmic patterns, and that's much easier. Of course, sometimes, you know, just in your head, you have, like, ah, this rhythm pattern, but sometimes you don't, and so this can be helpful for a time like that. But let's say I wanted to do this a, you know, like a different way. Let's say I, I like that pattern, but I want something else. So let's look over here at Engine 2. I have a cajon here with a bunch of patterns I need to erase. Let me erase that. So let's say I wanted to do something similar, and I want to use the same pattern, but this time, instead of starting on this first one and doing one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, let's start on the second uh, eighth note here. So I'll do zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one, zero, one. Uh, let me see here. So let me do, I'll do the palm. Uh, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, like that. I guess I can change that too. So let's hear this now, both of these playing together. Okay. Okay. 
Here we go. And I could do the same thing here where I fill the spaces in if I want to. It's probably going to get a little bit busy sounding, but who cares? Let's hear it. Okay, I don't think that really added anything there. But that's something you can do. But let's say, like, okay, that's cool, but... And I could keep shifting it through and start in different places. But what if I want another rhythm that's not that? I can go to this one with 5-8. So this is one zero one one zero one one zero. So let's try that. One zero one one zero. Uh, was it one one zero? Let me check that to make sure it's correct. Yeah, there we go. So now let's hear that. Okay, so you can hear that, how that sounds, and you can do that with any of the patterns. I can shift that. I can do all sorts of things. So by doing this, there's all sorts of rhythmic patterns I can generate just by using these two. But here you see I have other ones for 316. I would usually do this in 16th notes, but like I said, this is just the number of beats in the pattern. I could do this in 8th notes. I could do it with triplets. I could do it with whatever I want. And so these are really common ones here. Uh, here's also like 3, 7, so if I had a bar of 7, 8, I could use this pattern, or if I just wanted to keep it in the same bar, I could do it also. But that's just like lots of variations, and I know you're probably wondering, like, hey, like, why aren't you doing, you know, like, more variations? But I'll talk about that later when we get into the math portion of it. But I think this gives you, like, a good idea of things you can do. Let's do, like, one more thing here. Like, I have a shaker here. So let's try one of the 16th note patterns and add that there. So let's do, I don't know, which one do you want to do? You want to do uh, this one with 7 16 So it's like 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. Okay, let's try here. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, uh, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2. One, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two. Okay, so let's hear this now. Actually, I'll just play it just by itself. Actually, I didn't like that at all, actually. I could try doing something else. I could put like the soft ones in between there if I want, but I don't know if that's going to help. Let's see here. Let's try it by itself, see if that sounds better. That sounds a little bit better, but it's a little bit too fast. Let's hear it. Okay. I don't really like that, <laughs> to be honest. So uh, that's one of these things. It's a learning experience. Not everything's going to sound good, but in general, you can kind of mix it up and you can come up with some interesting things in here. Also, you can do something if you want to use this for poly... Sorry, not... Actually, I will. I'll talk about polyrhythms. So in here, let's go back to this one. So I showed you that bar of 7-8. One of the great things about Geist is you can actually do polyrhythms in here. So let's see if I take palm A and reduce like that. Now, instead of 8 notes, I have 7. And I can play the patterns with ones playing, you know, 8 bars or 8 notes in a row. And this one's playing 7 bars. So I can actually make polyrhythms. So let what am I doing? I'm screwing up the screen. Sorry about that. Uh... If I look here, it's one zero one zero one zero zero. So let's try that. One zero one zero one zero zero. On the wrong bar, sorry. So let's just listen to that by itself. Here we go. That turn that okay, good.
So it's like it's playing a bar of 7-8 in there, but when I combine it with this part here, it should have an interesting sound, so let's hear it. Okay, so there you go. You can generate all sorts of uh, polyrhythms using that. So that's a really easy way to generate all sorts of new rhythms and complex rhythms. If you use something like 7-8, like it's going to take a long time for it to repeat and get back to the original starting point. Uh, if you really want to figure that out, use a calculator and figure out the greatest common factor of these and that will show you what it is. Is it greatest common factor, greatest common multiple? I forget. It's one of those things, but for those of you that are math inclined, you, you can figure it out. If you use a smaller one, like a bar of uh, like 3, 8, or I'm sorry, it's like a, like a pattern of like 2, 3 or something like that, it'll repeat faster. So keep that in mind. The, the smaller it is, I'm sorry, what am I doing here? The less number of uh, beats you have, the faster it will repeat itself. But that's one cool thing you can do. But let me show you another thing. Let's get out of everything here. Let me erase this. You can also use this melodically. So someplace, okay, here. If we look here, I did something with violins. I just did this really fast so I didn't put any dynamics in any of this. But it's just for demonstration purposes. So here I chose a A minor arpeggio. So it consists of notes A, C, and E. And so I have two bars. So I'm just doing the eighth bar pattern. It's this first one, uh, E3-8. So I'm actually starting on the second beat. So instead of starting with the one, I'm starting with the zero. And I had all the zeros represent the note A. And the notes one could either be a C or an E. And it just did it by ear. But let's listen to how it sounds. Here we go. So as you can see, it's easy to generate a musical pattern that way, and I think it doesn't sound so bad. I don't know if it's the most creative thing, but if you're thinking like, ah, oh, I always you know, have this same idea for an ostinato in my head, and you can't think of what to do, this is a, kind of a cool way to break it up, and it's easy to generate ideas this way. So you can use it not only rhythmically, but also melodically. But let's go to the last part. I know I sh said I'd show you how to do this, so I'll show you how to actually make these yourself so let's see i'll do e3 and eight so this is how you do it because obviously like here i gave you some hints but there's more than this you can do it with any any numbers you want but let me just show you so if i start here with i have eight beats in total and i have three hits so one two three four five six seven eight okay so I have that. What you want to do is you want to separate them evenly. So take some of the zeros and put them next to the one. So for each zero I have, I put it next to the one. So I'll show you. I'll separate them by the groups by commas. So like one, zero, one, zero, one, zero. And then I have two zeros left over like this. Okay. So that's pretty good. But if I have two remainders like this, it's not so good. I need one remainder is okay, two it's not. So that means I need to move these into here again. So I just do the same thing again. Move each of these zeros next to here behind the one zero. So I'll show you that. One zero zero, comma, one zero zero, comma, one zero. Okay, and so I do have this group of one zero at the end, but that's okay because there's only one, so it's one remainder. So this is my final pattern. So easy enough. Let's check over here. And one zero zero, one zero zero, one zero. Good. See? It all works out. That's how you do it. But let me show you a slightly more complicated example. So let's do like seven and sixteen. This one is a little bit harder. And you saw here I just moved them, but it's actually easier if you use division if you're using a larger number like this. So let me show you. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 
I know, so hopefully I'm not making a mistake with the number of these. But as you can see, like 14, or sorry, 16 will divide into 7 two times. So it means I'll have groups of 2. So let's see here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay. Looks pretty good so far. Let's do the same thing again. Next line, move those zeros down to make new groups. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. And you think, ah, we're done. But actually, we're not. You see these groups of ten? You see how many we have? If there's only one group of ten, it's okay. But since we have so many, it's not good. So let's move it over again. Take two of these and put it next to our group of one hundred. So here we go again. One zero zero one zero one zero zero one zero one zero one zero. Let me see. Five, ten, fourteen. Okay. Let me make sure. I'm not. <laughs> I hope these groups are even. Tell me if they're not, and I'll leave an annotation to fix it. But it should be okay. And so it looks pretty good, but still we have three groups of these 10s, so I need to do it one more time. If there's only one group of 10, it would be okay, but mm, it's not okay like it is. We need to make sure it's divided completely evenly. So here we go. 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. And let me count to make sure that's okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 14. Okay, that's 16. So this should be our final answer, and let's check it over here to make sure I did this correct. Yes, that's perfect. And so this and this are your final answers, and this is how you do it. In, in this case, I used 16 and 7, which you already had, but you don't have to do that. You can use any two numbers you want. And also, you notice, like, ah, you didn't do every single combination. If you notice, if you do something that divides completely evenly you get a really boring rhythmic pattern. So, like, I'll show you. If I did, like, E, 4, and 8, this is really boring. So, let's say, like, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, what do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Wow. So, that's just <laughs> basically, like, eighth notes. Like, hit, rest, hit, rest. This is boring. It's you know like a conventional rhythm, which you don't need help figuring out. Also, if you notice some rhythms like uh, nine sixteen and or I say like seven sixteen, I could do nine sixteen, which wouldn't divide evenly. So you think like, oh, why wouldn't you do that? But nine sixteen and seven sixteen are actually the same. It's just the ones and zeros are reversed. So if you want to think like, ah, oh, I want like a nine sixteen pattern, just take the seven sixteen pattern and reverse it. And the same thing with the other multiples. So if I wanted a what, uh, 13, 16 pattern, just take the 3, 16 pattern and reverse it. I, actually, I'm not sure that's right. Uh, anyways, uh, so you can do that. Lots of them are in reverse. Even this, like the 3, 8 and 5, 8, if you notice, those are actually reverse and they're shifted. But the actual pattern is the same so you don't have to figure out every single one of them but if you're going to do this and use polyrhythms you might want to know how to do this so that's it uh, i know the last part was probably boring but useful if you have any questions about this leave them below um if you have any cool polyrhythms or you come up with anything uh let me know because i'd like to hear it but until next time uh leave me a like subscribe and i'll see you